Hey guys, I'm Aaron and this is SketchUp Square One where we take a look at the basics of using SketchUp. Today, we're going to dive into this shadow window. So the shadow window has a bunch of sliders and buttons and that kind of thing and it's, it's a little intimidating, it can be a little confusing how it works, but uh, if we break it down it's really pretty simple. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, so here I have shadows turned on and I have the shadow settings window open. Um, if you don't already have this, if you're on Windows, this is part of the default tab bar. You just need to click where it says shadow settings. In Mac, you might have to go up to Windows and turn on shadows here. Uh, the basic window is pretty simple. So we'll start with the basic and then we'll expand it and dive into some of the settings. So what I have here is the, the icon is the the toggle to turn shadows on and off. Uh, next to that, we have the international time. So right here, I'm, I'm modeling in Colorado, so I have mine set to UTC minus seven. Based on your time zone, where you are located in the world, you can pick that. If your model is geolocated, that is if you go up to file and you go to geolocation and you place this model in a specific location, it will automatically populate this value right here. Uh, if you're not doing that, or if you want to override that, you can just pick the value here. And it's going to give you uh, an approximate location of the sun relative to your model based on that time zone. Um, the other thing we have down below here is a time and date slider. So this is super simple. I know a lot of people get hung up on this, um, but what I can do here is I can choose what month and then what day of the month I want to have this model placed. And based on that, based on that information, it'll generate those shadows. So you can see here, um, if I look at, let's go to, let's go to, to now. We're gonna go to, to July. So July, sun's high up overhead. Uh, and I can see as I go from early morning, the sun is coming in from the east side, casting shadows to the west. And as I flip over to the evening, now the sun's over me. It's on the west side, casting shadows back to the east. Straight up the green line is north. So this is pretty simple. This is pretty pretty easy the way this works. Um, and then obviously, depending on the time of the year, the shadows are going to come in not only at different times, but also in different directions. So that's m shadows at its most basic. That is what that is. That is what those sliders do for you. Um, you can play with those. These are approximations. Like I said, this is not going to be exactly where it is every place in that time zone. If you want more precise shadows, then you do want to use add location to put this model where it belongs. But this is an approximation based on uh, data for the time zone you have selected. Pretty simple. Um, one of the things people say is that, well, I want the shadow to come in a certain uh, wind, you know, I want light to come in a window, cast a shadow, that kind of thing. If you if you have it placed and, you know, if I was looking for shadows coming this direction here where I wanted, you know, this box to cast a shadow on Sumele, um, I'm not going to be able to get that because of the time zone and the orientation of my model. If I want something like that, then I would have to grab my whole model and then use uh, rotate or something to potentially rotate my model so that those shadows fell that way. So if I was looking to cast a shadow onto Sumele with this pillar, for example, I'd have to spin it all the way around like this before it did that. So these shadows that show up are based on real world information. You can't just tell the sun to go to a spot that it doesn't exist in the real world. All right, let's look at some of the options here. If we, if we click the little plus down here, it's going to drop the secondary window down. We have three things here. We have our light and dark values. We have use sun for shading, and then we have what shadows display. I'm going to hit the bottom first because it's it's a little simpler than the other two. Um, like uh, easy does it, you know. That's the way to do it. So first thing is display shadows on faces. As a shadow gets created, is it going to cast shadows onto other surfaces? If I toggle this on and off, you can see what that is. That is simply these shadows fall and they cast onto other things. On ground says the ground plane. So this is zero high. There's an invisible plane that SketchUp knows about that's called the ground plane. And if that is turned on, those values will fall on the ground. If it's turned off, they won't. So with on faces 
on and on ground off, I will only get shadows that are actually on something that's in the model. This makes a lot of sense. And a lot of time the ground plane is not something she considers part of your model. If you actually want a ground, if you want something that is on the ground, you want to model it like I have this plane here. Uh, last one down here is from edges. So if I look at this box right here, say so deleted all the faces out of it, so it's just lines, that's what that's saying. Do I want to see uh, profiles from edges? Am I treating these edges like they had some kind of depth to them and they would actually cast a shadow? Edges are actually infinitely thin. They're not something that could exist in the real world. If you want something to actually have with if this is going to be like, I don't know, if this is rebar or something like that, then I'd want to actually go model it with depth. It, a, a line really doesn't exist in real space because it has no thickness, so it can't exist. Um, even a hair has some thickness to it. A line, by definition, doesn't. But if you want to, if you want to just kind of have it cast some shadows, you can turn on from edges and get that to show up. So that's those options. So re real quick, easy options there. Um, these other two I, I'm putting off because they're, they get a little more obscure. So light and dark is pretty simple. So how light is the brightest? So if I go to 100%, then my, my bright white where the sun hits is 100% white. And dark, how dark is my darkest dark? That would be, you know, not black, but pretty darn dark. Whereas my, uh, if I go to 100%, of course, everything's washed out, everything's bright white. So you can see, you get a lot of people don't think about this, but you can get some more dramatic lighting pretty easy just by dropping the dark. So without actually changing anything, I'm not changing the time of day, it's still 1.25 p.m., I like where the shadows are going, but by dropping my dark to a darker shade, uh, I can get some more severe shadows. Same thing here, if, I, if, I want, if I'm looking for more of a, like a nighttime, I can actually drop my light down too. So generally somewhere here in between is where, where most models get created. Okay, the final thing we're look at here is use sun for shading. If you turn this on or off while shadows are turned on, it doesn't make any difference. See that? There's no, no change. If I turn shadows off and toggle it, you'll see a big difference. See that? So with shadows off, I have the option of turning on use sun for shading. What this says is I want a consistent light source across my entire model. So even though shadows aren't on, it's saying take where the sun is based, again, based on my sliders, so I can actually adjust that, and have a light fall and have that light the model. So if I look at here, this is approximately where the sun's coming, everything's pretty consistent white. If I swing it around the other side, and look at this side, everything is consistent gray, that's not getting hit by light. That is use sun for shading. If use sun for shading is turned off, um, some people will have noticed this, what happens now is there is a fake light that lights up the screen and it's based on the camera location. So as the camera, that's, that's where we're looking at the model from, moves around the model, surfaces that face that camera get lit up with light. See that? So they're white as I'm looking at them. See this one's kind of grayish, but as I swing my model around, it lights up. The face right now down here in the bottom is kind of grayish, but if I flip this up so my camera is facing directly at it, it lights up also. So this is the default lighting source for SketchUp. As you move around, you are representing the light, basically. You are the sunshine of my SketchUp model. If I turn you sun for shading on, it's still gonna light up the model, but it's lighting it from that one spot that the sun's coming in, regardless of how close or where I look at the model from. So it's consistent. A lot of people ask, you know, I, I put a color onto this model, but as I spin around, it changes color. And that's because as you move around the model, you're actually moving the light as well. So this is pure white on the ground, but it looks gray if I look at it from the side because the light from the camera, me, is not hitting it directly. Whereas if I go to perfectly perpendicular to it, now it's turning pure white again. And that's all a function of the lighting, whether it's this active lighting that's coming from the camera or the light coming from the shading. So I know there's a lot of things <laughs> we just talked about. There's a lot of pieces. Um, shadows is an 
awesome tool to add depth to your models. Look, look, I mean, this thing that I created right here, it's it's a couple of shapes on the ground, but once you put that lighting in, it gets some depth and it, it really does add some, some cool uh, realism and, and like I said, depth to the model. One thing to note about shadows, it is more intensive on your computer to generate shadows than it is to not. So if you're working in a model and it gets to be a bigger model, you should probably work with shadows off and use shadows as a presentation tool. You know, put your shadows in once you want to actually show the model, but while you're actually working in it, especially if your model gets big and more demanding, you might want to turn shadows off. You'll get better performance. If you like that video, click like down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. We create several SketchUp videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Most if not all of our content nowadays is created based on comments from viewers like you. Do you use shadows? Do you like shadows? What should we look at next on Square One? We like making these videos a lot. We'd like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.